Hello and welcome to your 61st SQL Server tutorial. My name is Johnny DeLuca and tonight I'm going to be talking to you about understanding a table valued functions. Alright, so table valued functions come in two types. We have inline and we have multi-statement. The inline function simply returns a result set and the multi-statement function offers the ability to include logic within the body of the function. Both return a complete result similar to selecting from a table or view, but the multi-statement function can perform the logic and return data. So a little sample syntax for both are shown right here on this Word document. Okay, so go ahead and uh, you can copy that down and study it. And as with the scalar function, most of the code is optional. What you should notice here is that both can return a table. The inline function only returns the result of a select as it's set, while the multi-statement function uses a table variable that can be defined. The rows of data are added to the table as per the code and can be manipulated before the data is returned. This is unlike the inline table value function where any data manipulations or filters must be done in the actual query. Okay, so now let's go over to Management Studio and let's take a look at how to create an inline table value function. So go ahead and connect to an instance, oh, go over to Object Explorer and expand your databases folder. We're looking for AdventureWorks 2012, and then we are looking to expand the programmability folder. And then we're going to right-click on the functions folder. We're going to new, and we are going to inline table value function, the first option right here. And just this is very similar to what we saw in our last or scale scalar value function tutorial. Now it automatically populates this code in here but this is just the example I have a little bit of a modified version so what we're going to go do is go over here to new query and we're going, going to go back over here and grab the code that I have prepared All right and that is right here grab this guy going down to there copy that Paste that in. Okay. I'm not sure if I ever covered this before either. What you see right here, these dashes, this is comments in SQL Server and other programming languages. It differs, for instance, like in C, two slashes like that would be for comments and whatnot. But that's what that is right there. And so basically, SQL Server knows to ignore this. And that's not affecting the code, that's just comments. So I, I'm not sure if I stated that before but just in case and you were wondering now you know okay so now go ahead and type in all this code here and then uh, so well, let me explain a little bit uh, the inline table value function accepts one parameter it accepts the uh, sales order ID this parameter is used in the function to limit the results set to only rows that are associated with the value Inside the function is a single t sequel statement that is limited by the parameter. All right, so now let's execute this query. Okay, commands completed successfully. Now, let's open another new query window. And we have another piece of code to go ahead and slap in here. And that guy is right here. Simple little bit of code here. Copy this. Go back over, paste it in. Now, let's execute the query and review the results. Alright. So, in this preceding script, the function accepts all three parameter types. The input, the default, and the optional, and in that order. So, if you tried to execute the function without specifying null, it would fail. Therefore, if you have default values, you must either supply a value or use the default keyword. Also, if you have an optional parameter, you must specify a value or supply null. You follow the same steps 
to alter or drop the function as when altering or dropping the scalar function, which I showed you in a previous tutorial. So, okay. And then to conclude, I just want to talk real briefly about some of the limitations of functions. But just as with any object inside SQL Server, user-defined functions have functions, not functions, have limitations. One limitation is that you cannot use a try-catch block inside a function. So that being the case, you have to create your own error, hand error handling uh, ways to grab those errors. A limitation specific to scalar functions is that they cannot return text, end text, image, cursor, or timestamp data types. Lastly, user-defined functions cannot be used to modify the database state. Using functions in a select statement could adversely affect the performance of the query. And this is because the function will be called once for every row returned. Therefore, you're going to want to be pretty cautious using complex functions when returning large result sets. So, uh, that does it for this tutorial. In my next tutorial, uh, 62, we're going to dive into stored procedures and we're going to start getting in detail with stored procedures. So you're definitely going to want to check that out. Uh, thanks for stopping by. I'll see you there.